your saints that you guys have for your church, St. Um, Constantine and Helen. Um, I guess what's the significance behind choosing them for your um, church? And That's a good question. Uh, happened many, many, many years. It happened back in, in 1913. Mm -hmm. So why they chose Constantine and Helen? Mm -hmm. this, hap this is uh, uh, the Apostle Andrew, mm -hmm. the Ukrainian. We're just renting the mm -hmm. church here uh, for Sunday mornings until we finish building ours. Our church is going to be about a, just about a mile away. Mm -hmm. uh, so why they chose Constantine and Helen is a good question. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> We're Greek. Um, oh, Greek. Orthodox. Okay. But just for you to understand, all Greek Orthodox, Ukrainian Orthodox, Syrian Orthodox, Antiochian Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Albanian Orthodox, Armenian Orthodox, we're all the same. Okay. Different cultures, different nationalities, but mm -hmm. we're all the same. Mm -hmm. okay. About that, like what? Sure. Like um, I know it's. I was looking at here. Um, it's the Great Schism. Is Great that? Schism in 1054. Mm -hmm. What was like the conflict that separated? The, the conflict uh, was something that's called the Filioque, mm -hmm. and it is a conjunction, A and D that was added that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and from the Son. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, no, that can't be. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit can't come from two separate, mm -hmm. it comes from the Father to the Son. And so that, that broke the, the, the church apart at that time. We also have to say, and be honest that a great deal, a great deal of politics was also yeah. involved. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to say that this great schism of 1054 was just because of, uh, of theological issues. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as I know, when still there is a gap between us, there's an understanding mm -hmm. uh, of that, and, and we're working on that. Those those are all the issues. Uh, that we're discussing in dialogue, so we can come back together. I mean, this is ridiculous that we're apart. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't most of the things that you saw today mm -hmm. basically the same, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of similarities that I sure. saw. Sure. Uh, Tell us a little bit about <laughs> the great Petrarch, uh, the leader of the of the church. I'm not mm -hmm. exactly sure if um, I have the right. It's a Petrarch of Constantinople. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. Well, as you have your Pope, mm -hmm. Pope of Rome, mm -hmm. it's just another word for patriarch, mm -hmm. uh, going way back uh, in Anti Antioch, they were, they were called popes also. Mm -hmm. But it, it's basically, it's, it's the same term, uh, so as, as uh, let me tell you what the difference is between Pope of Rome and the Patriarch. Mm -hmm. The Patriarch is only first among equals. Mm -hmm. The Pope is your, is the big, big boss, <laughs> okay? Our Patriarch, he's chairman of a board, but there's a board. Mm -hmm. We don't have infallibility. Your Pope is, you consider him in in issues of theology as infallible. We don't have that. Mm -hmm. So whatever decisions, anything that comes from our church, it has to go through a council first. Mm -hmm. And in it's fact, about we like are the significance preparing. of the Trinity, because I know it's a big part of your, all of your masses. It's, and like, It is everything. Yeah. It's absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I would have to say to you that you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to offend anybody. We're on the same page. Mm -hmm. But most of the others are not. And the Trinity takes a different complexion in most of the Protestant world. Mm -hmm. For us, everything, it is, that is mm -hmm. 
Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. So it's the center of everything for us. Mm -hmm. We won't pronounce um, the name right, but Theo, Theodokis, Theodokis right. Mary. Well, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's interesting because every time I said that, I made sure I did it in English. <laughs> and then I said to myself, are they going to know what Theodokos is? But then it's immediately followed by Ever Virgin mm -hmm. Mary. And I said, well, we're going to get that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Theodokos means that she was the holder mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a controversy back in the early church that there was a Christotokos that she was only, she was holding God, and she was holding only Christ in her, not God. We don't believe that. We believe it's God that she held. Is, is that? Um, that is, yeah. that's, the, that's the Virgin Mary. And, and, you know, and it's interesting because, and I said this to the group last week also, that we get a bad rap in that people say, oh, you're, you know, when it comes to women, you don't allow women to priests, of course. Mm -hmm. You don't need that. No. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, women take a, a, a back seat in the Orthodox Church. Well, that doesn't look like a back seat to me, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and you heard her how many times uh, that we re referred to her, right? How yeah, many? So, it's not true. You don't. Mm -hmm. she's, she's the conduit. This is the, it's called the Pantocrator, up in the uh, zone here. Is there a, uh, I, I didn't notice, is there a uh, icon of Christ up there? Uh, there's a dove. A dove, okay, mm -hmm. well that's representative of yeah. the Holy Spirit, yeah. the Trinity, okay? Yeah. So, as you can see, this, in order to get to the Holy Altar, you got to go to the Virgin Mary. Mm. You see? So, mm. Christ, God comes down through his mother onto the holy altar, and that's where the liturgy mm -hmm. takes place and the consecration oh. of the gifts and everything. Now that, that, that's definitely... Uh, one how Eucharist, do you guys the Eucharist, and um, like how everyone comes up and I guess takes a spoonful of right. the body, body of Christ. Body and blood, mm -hmm. not bread and wine, mm -hmm. okay? And so it's, it has mm -hmm. been transformed, mm -hmm. no question, right? Um, I think, like, what is the substance that you give to, like, like, I know it's the body, the body of Christ, but, like, like, how's, because it's different, it's a lot different from what we, right. we ourselves receive, no, so. ours is leavened bread. Oh, okay. And I guess yours would be considered to be unleavened, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, so. That's the difference in the kind of bread mm -hmm. and the kind of material that we use, the two different types of bread. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we put that in the wine, mm -hmm. and of course the wine and the, and, um, the bread become body and blood. Oh. I won't say this um, right either, the iconostasis. Okay. And like, um, I guess why the, like the most of the mass is performed behind the iconostasis? Mm -hmm. Well, in the back, that's called the uh, uh, narthex. Mm -hmm. And it's like a transitional space that you're coming into the church. Uh, you're leaving the world behind. Mm -hmm. And you come there. And then what happens is the iconography in the narthex is usually the judgment, the final judgment. Mm -hmm. Christ on his throne, people falling into the mouth of hell, mm -hmm. other people coming close to him. So that was a place where the penitents would have to go. Mm -hmm. And they would have, when they weren't allowed to come into the church, they would have to go back there uh, until their time of penance was over. And this is called the nave, okay? Uh, it's the, the main body the church and the holy altar mm -hmm. is behind the screen mm -hmm. in the early church it wasn't quite like this uh, it developed that the mm -hmm. icon screen developed more and more and more mm -hmm. 
became more and more elaborate. It became much, much higher. Mm -hmm. much, much, many of the Russian churches had it going all the way up and you can't see anything inside. Uh, the new church that we're building, mm -hmm. it's going to be basically see-through. Uh, it'll be marble, but I've done it so that the icon is only small like this, mm -hmm. and you can see everything that's taking place inside. And uh, you've been, of course, to your cathedral uh, in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and how that has a cavorium on top of it. We're going to have the same thing. Uh, and so it, it developed. Mm -hmm. But what happened with that is then all of a sudden there was a separation. Priest in there, people over here, and the, the gap kept getting bigger and bigger. Now, you've got to mm -hmm. remember, if you go to... If you go to Greece, you go to Europe, Middle East, or anywhere, there are no pews. Everybody stands. Mm -hmm. This is just for the United States. We came here in the United States. So we said, well, we have to be like the Protestants and the, and the Catholics. They all have chair, uh, pews. We need the pews. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have an organ, but most churches you go to do have an organ. Mm -hmm. If you go to Europe, there are no organs or anything. Mm -hmm. So things developed. Mm -hmm. Things developed. Uh, icons for us, they are windows to heaven. It, it gives us, uh, we do not worship them. We only worship God. We venerate icons. So, like if you have in, in your pocketbook here a picture of a family member, boyfriend, mm -hmm. girlfriend, whatever, and you look at it, it brings to memory the person. Same thing here. But we see the Christ in whoever the saint is. And in every Orthodox church, it's usually the same. Christ, Virgin Mary, St. John the Baptist, the saint of who the church is named after. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the same everywhere. It's told, told us that you're designing in the shape of a cross. Yeah, if, yeah. So um, like, is that the way that most yes. original Orthodox yeah. churches are designed? If we were in a helicopter or an airplane mm -hmm. above looking down, you would see a cross. Mm -hmm. This one is more basilica, uh, doesn't have the wings on the side, mm -hmm. okay? But most pro most churches do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then like the domes, um, what's the significance yeah. of like the domes? Well, the major difference between the architecture of Orthodox and the architecture of, of the Protestant world, mm -hmm. the Protestant world has what? A steeple, right? Mm -hmm. We have a dome. For us, the dome is heaven. Mm -hmm. Heaven has come down to meet man. The Protestants, in their steeple, man goes up to meet uh. God. So we, it's just reversed for us. Because mm. God did. God mm -hmm. became man. He came down to earth. Not that we have to go up to him. Mm -hmm. He came to us. Okay? So that's what that is. And we're going to have a huge, is huge. The, the priest and you know what does the priest do other than oh. here well uh, you know pastorally we're the shepherd mm -hmm. of this flock and, and so we, we play an integral part in, in the life of the community not only our community but the greater community also mm -hmm. uh, you know taking Greek Orthodox Christianity mm -hmm. to everyone to the message mm -hmm. to the message to be given and uh, we're we're greatly involved in the life of, of all of the uh, all the families. Mm -hmm. So we play mm -hmm. a, a significant role. Mm -hmm. We're one big family. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions?